All right, let's solve another question related to arrays. Now this question is called as move zeros to end. And this is a lead code question, question number 283 and also has been previously asked in product based companies such as Adobe. Now the question must be, what is this question really expecting us to do? Why don't we just directly go to lead code and have a look, okay? So this is what the question says. It says, given an integer array nums, move all zeros to the end of it while maintaining the relative order of non-zero elements. What does this mean? We look at it. Also there is a note. Note says, note that you must do this in place without making a copy of the array. Oh, which means I can't allocate any extra space in my program. I can't create a copy. Fine. Example 1, 0, 1, 0, 3 and 12. So see, all the non-zero elements order should be maintained as it is, 1, 3, 12 and 0 should be pushed to the end, moved to the end. So this is the output. Similarly, it's telling if I give you an array whose length is 1, then there is no need for you to do anything as it is suited. How are we able to think? Now how are we going to do all this is the question. Let's explore, okay? Now first and foremost, let us assume this is that nums array which is given to us. So 0, 10, 22, 8, 0, 5, 0. At the end of the execution of the program, the same array, the same array should change in such a way that it becomes 10, 22, 8, 5, 0, 0, 0. This should be the final output. I hope you're able to understand. Now, how are we going to do that? What is going to be the logic if you ask me? It's very simple, guys. I am going to use a very commonly used technique, especially when it comes to arrays, called as the two-pointer approach. Now what is this two-pointer approach and how are we going to use it? You might ask. Now name itself tells two-pointer approach, so I am going to use two variables. So what I will do is, I am going to create a variable called as nz, which begins from 0, and I'm also going to create a variable called as z, which also begins from 0th index at the beginning of the array. Now you must be wondering, sir, what is this nz, nz? nz stands for non-zero. z stands for zero. Now, how am I going to use nz and z if you ask me? z's duty is to always stick to a zero element. nz's duty on the other end is to find the non-zero element. If nz finds a non-zero element, z will always be at the zeroth element. I will swap nz and z such that the non-zero element gets swapped with the zeroth element. So upon doing so, the zeroth element will slowly keep getting pushed to the end. Sir, how does this work? You may ask. Let me just demonstrate it for you. First thing I will do is, I will check if nz, is nz pointing to a non-zero element? Tell me is nz pointing to a non-zero element? No, it is pointing to zero. If it is pointing to zero, nz is not happy because it wants to find a non-zero element. So if at all it is pointing to a zeroth element, immediately I will tell hey, nz, please move forward and go find your non-zero element. Sir, what about Z, sir? Z will be wherever it is because you know Z is at the zeroth element. It will stick to that position. I will now check. Is the element at non-zero, is element at NZ non-zero? Yes, it is non-zero. It is 10. The moment it is non-zero, I will swap NZ with Z. And if I swap it, you guys know 10 is going to come here, 0 is going to come here. That is what is going to happen. They got swapped. And next what will I do? Next what I will do is, I will have to move both nz and z forward because nz is unhappy because it is at zero. It wants to find non-zero. Z is also unhappy because it wants to be where zero is but right now it is where non-zero is. So what I will do is, I am going to move nz forward. I am going to move z forward. Now, see, z is sticking to zero. Now I will check, hey nz, are you pointing to a non-zero element? Yes. Yes means swap with z. If I swap with z, then 22 gets swapped with 0, which means 0 comes here, 22 comes here. And now what should I do? Tell me, move nz forward, move z forward. So see, nz moves forward, z moves forward. Any confusion till here? 
Again, I will check. Hey, NZ, are you pointing to a non-zero element? If you are pointing to a non-zero element, then swap. Swap what? NZ with Z. If I swap, swap NZ with Z, then 0 comes here and 8 comes here. Right? And next, what should I do? Both NZ and Z are unhappy. NZ wants to move because it doesn't want to be where 0 is. Z wants to move because it should be where 0 is. Operability. Again, I will check. Hey, NZ, are you pointing to a non-zero element? No, it is pointing to 0. If it is pointing to 0, who is unhappy is NZ. Z is happy because it is still with 0. So, should I move NZ forward or should I move Z forward or should I move both forward? If you have been tracking the algorithm correctly, you know, the only person unhappy is NZ, move only him forward. I hope you are able to understand. Ah, again, I will see NZ, are you pointing to 0 or non-zero? Non-zero. Non-zero means swap with Z. Swap with Z. If I swap it, 5 and 0 get swapped. And 0 comes here, 5 comes here. I hope you are able to think. Now, should I move both forward? Yes, because both Z and NZ are happy, are unhappy. So, NZ moves forward, Z moves forward. Again, I will check NZ. Are you pointing to non-zero element? No, you are pointing to zero. No means NZ is unhappy. Only NZ I will move forward. And if I move forward, NZ goes outside the boundary of the array. If NZ goes outside the boundary of the array, I will stop the process. And upon stopping, you can observe all the non-zero elements or sorry all the zero elements has been moved to the end all non-zero elements are at the beginning in the same order in which they appeared so did you notice how using two pointers i successfully rearranged my array without having to create a copy that's it simple solution now how are we going to write this as code now the core logic was first check if in case the element at nz position, a of nz, is it not equal to 0? Not equal to 0 means what? Non-zero element. If it is a non-zero element, I must swap nz with z. So that's what I'm saying. Swap a of nz with a of z. How to write that? We will see. Then, move nz forward, move z forward. Else, else means this condition was false. False means nz was at a zero element. If nz was at a zero element, nz is unhappy. So move only nz forward nz plus plus. This process should keep repeating itself. So, I should put it inside a loop. How long should it repeat? It should keep repeating as long as nz was inside the boundary of the array. The moment nz went out of the boundary of the array, you must stop. You must stop. Right? So, that's what I will tell. I will tell while. While means what? As long as. As long as nz is less than length of nums length of uh, here i'll call it as nums here i'll call it as a okay let me change all this a to nums it doesn't really matter whether you call it a or nums i'll change it all to nums as long as nz is less than length of nums length of nums will give me 7 as long as nz value is less than 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 means it is inside the boundary as long as it is inside the boundary repeats no probability simple logic Everyone understood? Great. Now, what are we waiting for? Let's go write some code. Let's just go directly write the solution in lead code. So, you can see we have just expected to complete this function called as move zeros, which will accept the nums are. Now, very simple, I'll leave some space. Now, what I'm going to do inside that is first of all, before writing the core logic of our program, you must understand if in case lead code gives you an input where it passes you an array which has only a single element. Do you have to do any moving, shifting, nothing? You will be wasting time, isn't it? So, why don't you directly check if the length of the array that is given to you is 1? Even otherwise, what if they give you an empty array? Possible. They can give you an empty array, so length is 0, then also you don't have to do anything. So, what I will do is, like this I will tell nums.length. Nums.length. No, no, no. Just remove all that. Nums.length. Nums.length I will take. And I'll store this inside a variable called as uh, size. And size has to be of type int and semicolon also. Okay, now I'll just check if in case this size is equal to 0, 0, or this size is equal to 1. If size is 0 or size is equal to 1, then no need to do anything. So, how do you write code, sir? See, I want to come out of this function. 
all I will do is return because what is the return type void don't you don't have to return any value but if you just tell return control will come out otherwise now I will start my logic so I'll declare two variables in uh, nz is equal to 0 comma z equal to 0 both have to start from 0 then I'll write as long as nz is less than size I will tell because anyway size has the length right size then I'll come inside that and now I will just start my core logic which is if in case a nums of nz nums of nz I will check if in case nums of nz is not equal to 0 which means it's a non-zero element if it is a non-zero element I'll come inside if and what will you do inside if first swap the nz element with the z element for that you can use a temporary variable so int temp is equal to a of nz next uh, whatever is there in uh, i mean nums of nz sorry next what i will tell is uh, whatever is the, uh, to nums of z uh, so nums of nz i will give whatever is there in nums of z simple swapping two variables using third variable okay next in nums of uh, z I, I mean nz yeah fine I will give whatever is there inside temp that's it simple next increment nz increment z okay now I'll just uh, delete these lines yeah that's that's it. that's about a uh, code now I'll just click on run code if I click on run code then uh, let's see Okay, it is telling time limit exceeded. Uh, okay, else we have not put. I am very sorry. Else. Else means what? Else means, see, this was not equal to 0, you did this. But if it was equal to 0, you have to move nz forward, nz plus plus. Okay, great. Now, if in case I click on run code, then uh, you can notice that yes, it got accepted. If I click on submit, then uh, let us see. It has accepted right so this was a simple problem yet a very very interesting problem which introduced you to a concept called as this two-pointer approach which we'll be using many times in the future anyways I'll catch you with the next program till then take care bye bye